welcome back. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. If not, I'm sending good vibes for you. Thanks for tuning in. So this is the second part video in a three part mini series I'm doing on keeping that focus question at the forefront of our brains. Why healing? Why are we walking down this road? Why are we putting ourselves through this pain and there's good stuff coming up. So please stay tuned. In the first video in this series, I introduced you guys to what we're going to be talking about and what I learned. We ended that video with me getting in my car after work one day and driving home and starting this thought process where number one, my emotions were running out of control and that I didn't realize until I stopped to think about it and slowed down for a minute to realize that I was actually allowing my emotions and my overwhelm and my feelings of being overwhelmed to dictate my decision making and the direction of my life and the next step for me. And that's a big no-no. That's unhealthy. That's not a good behavior. That's not a healthy behavior. So we're going to pick up in this video with me. I'm driving in my car. I had made the decision. I'm going to keep my hair appointment. I put the key in the car and I knew that when I left work, the next step, because I was able to stop my emotions and not cancel my appointment because I'm tired, I'm feeling overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. I know that I need to get to the salon and the salon is about 40 minutes from my work. So I get in the car and I'm driving and I'm thinking about the fact that I have the ability to control my actions and my reactions and how I perceive and take in information and process it and then regurgitate it back out and how I react. And this is why I think keeping that question, why healing at the forefront of our brains, because it keeps us focused. I'm, I'm thinking this stuff through as I'm driving to the salon and recognizing that, okay, I just stopped my emotions and their tracks. What next? And I realized that I was thinking, wow, I have this ability to stop my emotions. I have control over some things in my life and my own self, and I have personal autonomy. No one else can dictate for me whether I go to the salon or not, right? This is just one example. There, It may apply differently for you. And it dawned on me that why did I think that I didn't have control? And it dawned on me that, you know, our past or the way we were raised or past abusive relationships or traumas that we have experienced have taught us otherwise, have forced us to become, in a way, survivalists. We are very reactive because we're in a survival frame of mind. We're not thinking proactively. We're very reactive because we've been in a state of defensiveness almost our entire lives or for a very long time with a very intimate relationship that affected us deeply. And when we correlate our pasts with our future and why healing, we're able to get to the point through healing where we learn or realize and eventually accept that we don't have to be the way we were taught or the way we were raised. We do have some say, we have some control over ourselves, and we have some say and control over the direction our lives are going to take and how we handle and process, process external things that are happening around us. Healing helps us unlearn the unhealthy behaviors and patterns that we learned from our abusive past or our trauma. And through healing, we unlearn the unhealthy and untruthful things that we've been taught to believe about ourselves that our abusive pasts or trauma experiences have taught us to believe about ourselves. And through healing, therefore, we learn what is healthy and what is truthful. And finally, through healing, we also learn to value and embrace and desire loving mutually beneficial, healthy relationships with others in every kind of capacity, not just intimate relationships. 
we value and we seek peace of mind, heart, and soul. And we learn to embrace a healthy mindset focused on joy, fulfillment, and gratitude. So this is how I was reminded of all of this. Because that day when I was leaving work and I was driving in my car, feeling defeated and having successfully stopped my emotions from running amok, um, therapy had taught me to stop my emotions and take the time to second explore what the real problem was, seeking awareness. So I had stopped the emotions from running away. And second, I was wanting to explore the real root of the problem. Thirdly, I knew that I needed to think rationally and logically about the external um, stimulation and circumstances that I was the recipient of and what I could control and what I couldn't control and differentiate between which was which. And then fourth and lastly, I needed to ask myself, is what I was feeling reasonable given the circumstances? And it's not easy to sort all that stuff out. It really isn't. It takes time, which is why I think journaling and taking quiet time for yourself every so often on a regular basis is so important. In my case, everything that was happening around me was out of my control. And for that reason, it seemed unreasonable for me to be feeling so defeated when I couldn't control any of it. But all of the stuff that was happening, well, most of it, out of my control did impact my work and my ability to complete my work. So it seemed reasonable for me after some thought that I did feel defeated. I got to that point where I was asking, well, what can I do about these things? The server upgrade and the office manager being out. I've already asked for um, help and recommended solutions to these things and it hasn't helped. It's fallen on deaf ears. So what else am I supposed to do? I felt very much like throwing my hands up in the air. So as I was driving home, I was really focused on what was reasonable and what was unreasonable about what I was feeling. You know, what was fair, you know, about what I was feeling. And that train of thought led me to the realization that my feeling defeated was in part, hang in for the other part, but it was in part due to my lack of control my feeling stuck because I did not have the ability to plan my workday and my tasks and schedule for my de deadlines and so on. I felt like things were out of, the con out of control no matter how much I planned. And it was happening very frequently in larger and larger ways. And so that's what was feeling very chaotic for me is things were spinning out of control, so to speak. And at first, while I was driving and having this thought process, my first initial reaction was, ooh, Anne, wanting control isn't good. Wanting control isn't healthy. Wanting control is bad, right? And of course, I went down that self-blame road really quickly and easily because that's what we think, right? That wanting control or desiring control is a bad thing. But is it really? And here's what I'm talking about. I know myself well enough to know that I work really well, I work best when, and most productively, when I know it's expected of, my, expected of me, when the uh, goals are clearly outlined for me and I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and I know what the deadlines are and there's no ambiguity or guesswork on my shoulders. And in the past, I've been able to repeatedly exceed expectations that others have for me because I have 100% control over my own workload and I can plan. Naturally, I'm a good planner and I, I'm good at time management and I'm very organized. So it's not difficult. It's not a challenge for me to complete tasks timely on a regular basis. And that's just part of my nature. That's just how I work. So in that way, I feel like control can be a good thing and control is a good thing because it makes a producer a successful producer. But in stark contrast, not knowing what's expected of me and having ambiguous goals and deadlines 
and not knowing really what my role is or how to accomplish tasks if I haven't been trained well. And when others' lack of planning or poor decisions directly affect or prevent me from completing my own tasks that I had planned or intended, all of this makes me feel like I don't have control or that I've lost control. And that's a bad thing. It makes me feel like I have failed. And feeling like a failure is very triggering for me. And during those first few speed bumps, those minor things that were, those minor upsets that I was having at work, I was very much able to say, not my circus, not my monkeys. I, like I said in video number one, those things kind of ricocheted off me, but then they became more frequent and they became bigger. And so I started to absorb, a, you know, like, out of every five, you know, maybe in the beginning, I was able to deflect all five of them. And then the next week out of five of them, I absorbed one and deflected four. And then the next week I absorbed three and only deflected two. And then before I knew it, I was absorbing everything. And that's how I got to the speed bump. So the lack of control early on didn't really seem to affect me too much. I was able to manage that I didn't have control over certain things. It was the bigger external things like the server upgrade and the lack of communication with the office manager being out all day that I found more challenging to process. This is when I realized that lack of control or losing control or not having control in the first place was only part of the problem and only part of the reason why I was struggling to process things in a healthy way. And right there, I'm going to end this video and I'm going to wrap up in video number three, but this is a good place for us to stop because stay tuned for video number three, where I'm going to tell you part two and give you the real clincher. It's phenomenal. I am so grateful that the, all this happened because I do believe that in everything, there's an opportunity to learn and grow. And that's, you know, what healing is all about. And that's why we want to keep that question, why healing in the forefront of our brain? Because we want to keep getting better. We want to keep doing better. We want to be better than these external things that are happening around us that are bringing us down and trying to push us down the evil forces of the world, so to speak. And we want to rise above and be better because we're worth it. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to next video, number three in this mini series on why healing. Stay well and take care of you.